praise the Lord, everyone. God is good. Amen. I'm sure you all really enjoyed yesterday. On Sunday, Jesus resurrected. He's still alive. Amen. It's awesome to look back and still celebrate that. Are you ready for signing the word? Today's title is Satan tempted the Lord. Remember a few days ago, we signed a short version of this, but we've uh, added a lot more slides and pictures and verses. Are you guys ready? In Matthew chapter four and verse one, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit just one second here we go into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. It's very interesting. So Jesus was led. You know, I was kind of thinking about this and, and comparing Christ to Israel. And it says, into the wilderness. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, but Israel was in the wilderness for 40 years. We know the story about Moses where they were, they wandered for 40 years. So it's kind of comparing these two different stories here. You know, Jesus went through his temptations in his 40 days, same as Israel had their trials and struggles in the wilderness. Jesus experienced that, that tiredness and that hungry, that hunger, but he did not complain. God was human, and the Israelites were human. But Jesus was different. He was fully man and God. We'll explain that a little bit more too. Again, Israel, you know, they failed. They didn't obey. They rebelled and they complained against God. Jesus, but himself, he obeyed and he was humble. He was humble to that plan. even though that fleshly body wanted to be separate from the spirit. Okay? Here, I've added this a little more clarification in Ephesians 6 and 17. It says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now remember, in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1, it says the Spirit led it said it, the Spirit led him up to be tempted of the devil. And before we went to verse 2, I've added this Ephesians is because it's very important to have the Word of God. The Word of God is your best defense against Satan and his attacks. The Word of God is your best defense. You can't fight against the devil 
through your flesh and will never be successful. You have to fight the devil through the spirit with the word of God. The devil is not a human. You can't stab him or shoot him and use machine guns. It won't hurt him. You have to use the word of God against him. When you do that, then he will be hurt. You know, some people are hurt or offended by the truth. Because the devil has told them so many lies. But the devil has nothing, not a thing, not a, inside of him. So when you use that truth against him, it does hurt him. It offends him. Okay. So now we see Matthew chapter 4, verse 2. And when he had fasted, mean no food, for 40 days and 40 nights. Ooh, that is tough. He was afterwards and hungered. That proves that he was a natural, he had a natural body. He had the natural appetite, meaning he wanted and needed food to be satisfied. His body needed that for that energy. If we don't eat, if the human body doesn't eat, it gets weak. And this is when the devil took advantage to tempt Jesus. And trying to persuade him and trick him. The devil knows. He can see people when they fail or when they become weak. He knows exactly how to tempt. And the devil uses that a lot. He even used it against Jesus here. In verse 3, and the tempter here is the devil. It says, when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones... Be made bread. See, the devil knew that God has power. And he uses that for his glory. So here the devil's trying to persuade Jesus. You have the authority. You have the power to command these stones to become bread. Go ahead, you're hungry. In Genesis, we see that it says, good for food. It's talking about the tree of good and evil. And the devil used that food from that tree to tempt Eve. Saying it is good for food. Eve was human. And that's when she failed. Again, the devil used that then, and he's using it now to tempt Jesus. Go ahead, make these stones bread. You have the power, the authority. Again, in verse John 2 and verse 6. The lust here is talking about the, that fleshly desire. That lust of the flesh. I mean, the, the, the flesh is very, very weak. Again, Jesus here is, has fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. No food. He is hungry. So the devil's tempting him. Go ahead. Make the stones become bread. 
The devil does not want us to obey God. He knows our flesh will fail. But remember, this, the devil does not want us to obey this. This is the truth. So we have to use this against him. The devil likes to twist. He likes to twist what the word of God says or what we're supposed to be doing. So again, here he is talking to Jesus, telling him, tempting him to make the stones into bread. But Jesus answers, and he says, it is written. That's why this is called the sword of the spirit. It's not made of flesh, it is of the spirit. So he says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It's not your way or your want. It's God's process, God's plan. We can't just go ahead and do whatever we want to do. Wow, our video just <laughs> just shut down all of us, and obviously the devil does not like what we're teaching, but we're going to still teach the Word of God. Amen. Okay. Now remember that Jesus had a human body and a soul and a spirit of God. He's still one. Same as you, you have a body, soul, and spirit, but you're still one person. He was fully man and fully God because God is a spirit that's in him. Remember, God is still everywhere. That just absolutely just blows my mind of how that can be that God is just everywhere all the time and there's only him there's no one beside him this is why we have the title the devil tempted the Lord or Satan tempted the Lord and there wasn't Lord's it was Lord because there was only one in Hebrews chapter 13 says Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever praise God the devil go ahead and shut down the video I don't care we'll do it all again. praise God So why did the devil even try to tempt Jesus? Adam and Eve, they failed. They went through that test. So when they failed, God went ahead and became flesh, knowing that he would not fail because he's perfect. But the devil knew that he had a fleshly body, so he decided he's gonna tempt him. Same as he could tempt Job. We've all had that experience of facing temptation. Again, was that fleshly body and that spirit separate? No. He's still one, praise God. We know that we can follow him. Matthew 4 and 5 says, Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle, meaning the top,
You know how the old buildings, you know, have different pillars and very high points. And so here it says the very pinnacle, meaning the very top of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written. So the devil here, using the word of God, saying, it is written. So remember, the devil loves to twist the word of God. This is why we have to study to prove ourselves knowledgeable. We have to know the, the true word of God to prevent the devil from tricking us. If you don't read your word of God, you'll just accept it and believe. So you have to be careful. So even the devil here is using the word of God saying, Thyself, for it is written. And he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. Least at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. The devil's saying here, oh, if you fall, your angels will come save you before you hit the ground. Again, you know, we have some people that believe that Jesus is a second being of the Godhead or an angel. But that can't be. Because here we see it says he shall give his angels. So there's not two or three beings. There is a father, and then there's son, and then the Holy Ghost, but they're separate. When it says his angels, who would it be talking about? Or if Jesus himself was an angel, how would that work? It just doesn't make sense. Let's see, we'll explain it. Matthew 4 and 7, Jesus saith unto him, responding to the devil, says, It is written again. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Did the devil look up and try to tempt the God that was still in heaven? No, he's looking at Jesus and flesh and tempting him. Okay, go to the next verse. Matthew 4 and 8, the devil, remember they were just recently on the, the highest pinnacle of the temple. And so here we are, it says again, the devil taking him up into the exceeding high mountain. And showeth him, meaning Jesus, showing Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. I remember in the very beginning, beginning, Adam had control of all the animals. So again, here he's leading Jesus up to the highest mountain to overlook. 
And we went to South Lake Tahoe, but you know, we there's not a high enough point to actually see the whole city. But oh, we went to Hawaii. We were standing on top of the highest mountain. And we could see that full city of Hawaii. And this is kind of the same example here that he's taking to the highest mountain. You can see that full city. And he's speaking to Jesus. And he saith unto him, All these things, not part, but all these things, will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Just think about it. Okay, you have Satan and you have Jesus. And Satan's goal is to get Jesus to bow down and worship him. So we just read this here. And again, you won't find what I'm, I'm saying here in the, in, the, in the Bible about where people are saying that Jesus is an angel. You won't find that in the Bible. We'll never find that Jesus is an angel. Remember, the devil himself was an angel. So if Jesus was an angel, what would cause him not to bow? The devil and that angel would be the same, that same level of power. Angels can't be our saviors. And if you think Jesus is the second person, or a person of the Godhead, you believe in the three, if he bowed, there would still be two gods. You have to remember, the Spirit of God is everywhere, and he became flesh. This is why the devil wanted to conquer him so badly. This is why the devil wanted him to bow to him. I thank God every day that he did not listen to the devil. He is the only Lord. Jesus refused to bow to Satan. Again, also just to prove that Jesus was manifest in flesh, God clearly states, Thou shalt not bow to any other God before me. So the wise men, they bowed before baby Jesus. And all throughout the history, you'll learn that people bowed down to the flesh of Jesus. Did God become angry? No, because he is Jesus in the flesh. Let me look. I think this is supposed to be Matthew 4 and 10, I think. Made a mistake there, putting it all together. It says, Then saith Jesus unto him, Let's get thee, get away. meaning you, get away. Get thee hence, Satan, meaning go away, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only 
shalt thou serve. Remember, God is a spirit, and we worship him in truth and in spirit. We read John chapter 4. It talks about worshiping God in truth and spirit. So again, the devil knew that Jesus was God in flesh and that he was our Lord and Savior. There's just one, not many. And when Jesus says, you must leave, you must worship me. And the devil refused to worship, so he fled. The same thing that happens when people come and find Jesus. They bow.